So, I'm going to make this short and quick here. This is episode 64 of Just Joshing. I'm going to have a Viva Bell Hero as my guest later on in this episode, probably around the 6-7 minute mark. Somewhere in there. If you want to skip this, I'm going to be talking about the post-election. But I'm not going to be talking about the politics. I, I don't care. Um, I'm talking about the people. And where we go from here. If you're interested in that, keep listening. If you're not, go for it. it it's just basically my thing. I, um, election's over. And uh, I'm just watching my feeds, my tweets. And I'm seeing a lot of fear. And I'm seeing a lot of reactions. And some of it's understandable. Like, look. Considering what was said by by Trump during his whole campaign. Um, it is t entirely understandable to me why people right now are a little scared. And should be scared. Um, like I said. But the fact of the matter is. I mean, this it, as it stands is where it's going. So what do you do? What do you do? And that's and that's the uh, real frightening part here. What can be done? And I have a uh, friend of mine. I think she's amazing, and she's she's an amazing author, talented runner, um, has great kids. She's quirky. She's fun. She's fighting out of the gourd right this minute because her daughter came home tonight and asked her why you know does he hate women so much and why does he hate minorities and and there's no um what can you say to that and she's not the only one there's i have a lot of people so i'm thinking like there's not much i can do with what people are feeling right now other than say well this is this election felt like a big giant divide it was designed to in my opinion Create this. I've seen so many people go. If you voted for Trump, just unfollow me on Twitter right now. If you voted for this, just unfollow me on this. And the fact of the matter is, people people did what they thought was right. Or people wanted to change. People are angry. People are afraid. So, I think the most horrifying thing about this election for me was the fact that a buddy of mine at work. I'm in Canada. I'm an American. I can vote. I did vote. And another a friend of mine, um, an American. Amer well, a co-worker who has an American citizenship voted. And he voted for Trump, and he was, and he was Somalian to boot. Which, this blew my mind. You know, I, I here he is, but then, I'm going, then I think to myself, maybe there's just this part of people that just wants to watch things burn. And... So, it takes a blaze to make things burn. And right now, the biggest blaze we have is fear. And... You know, I don't want to, you know, see people scared anymore. And we need to talk to each other. Especially right now. Because there's such a gap. Such a divide. Who was picked and why I was picked. Um, we need to talk. And we need, and we need to, um, say, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where people, um, I, there was a pause there because I'm listening. I'm reading a tweet. I'm literally talking to somebody right now. I'm trying to take my own advice. Just reaching out. Just telling people we, we gotta do we gotta do what we gotta do and we gotta talk. The thing about today is we have Twitter. We have Facebook. We we can see each other, talk to each other. We can say you know what what's going on and chat. Um, I actually hate the block button on Facebook. I hate the block button on Twitter. I hate the filters. Right. The, the net is is trying to insulate. The fact is everybody's got their own thoughts, opinions, ideas. And we need to... We have this great communications tool. And if we don't want to divide, if we don't really want to fight each other, we should be talking to each other. Especially with someone that extreme in the White House. Because I really... It, Whatever my proclivities, no one in their right mind wanted that candidate in. And and no one in their right mind would uh, <laughs> would support anybody that would say what they said about women, minorities, nobody. Um, if you voted for Trump, though, I'm going to say this, I do understand. 
A lot of people don't understand this about about Trump's. But a lot of people that support Trump, a lot of them do not support his stances on these things. But they want to change, and Bernie Sanders was taken out of the running. This is the part of me that, might, that might anger some people. But the fact of the matter is, you know, no one wanted the same old, same old. And that's, that's what you saw in the polls more than anything else. Yes, he's a con man. Yes, he probably couldn't tie a pair of, you know, a pair of shoes together if they were Velcro. I'm not going to dispute that with anybody, but he was an alternative, or he seemed like the biggest alternative the American people have seen in years. That's why you want him. No other reason. So, like I said, that doesn't that doesn't make this easier. It doesn't make this right or wrong or any of that. Like I said, I'm, I'm not here to argue personal political philosophies. I'm not interested in that. What I am here to say, what I'm trying to say is, if you really want to avoid a lot of what people's fears of pain, anger, and bloodshed, talk to each other. Don't, do not let a choice divide you from people. Because if there's anything that this election has shown more than anything else about the United States, is how divided, how and segregated people have become from each other. And one of the reasons these extremities are possible is that. So if you are an American listening to this, talk to your neighbor. Do not be like my grandmother who's afraid to go outside and see her neighborhood. I was in my grandmother's house um, a week ago. She wanted to go outside. It's not the same neighborhood. I, I saw a bunch of kids play trick-or-treat. I went out, I, I walked around. That is what I saw more than anything else. Halloween. But again, there are filters everywhere it seems these days. And you create this kind of stuff when you are that divided from yourselves. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go off to be here. Be kind to each other. Be, be very kind to each other in, in the next day, week, month, year. We really should be kind to each other at all times. More than anything else, though, at this point in time, if you're listening to this, um, that more than anything else is what needs to, be, needs to be said. I don't like seeing my friends scared. Any of them. So, that's why I'm saying this now. Be kind. That might not seem like a whole hell of a lot right now, but honestly, talking to each other is talking is the first step. And today, more than anything else, we have the tools to do it. All right, that's it. No more political thing. You think it's me being preachy and a Zen master? Cool, that's your prerogative. Yell at me if you want. It's all good. But for the rest of you, for the rest of the show, I'm going to turn to my guest, Aviva Bell Herald. And uh, I'll wait until after the advertisement and talk about her. Okay? We're going to get to the interview and I'll do a little post wrap up. Okay? Tired of buying t shirts, coffee cups, and other memorabilia that all podcasts seem to have? I sincerely hope not because I'm jumping aboard this gravy train right now. That's right. You can be the proud owner of a Just Joshing t shirt, photographic print, and coffee cup at my Red Bubble store. Redbubble has one-click ordering and will ship anywhere in North America. Check out http worldwideweb.redbubble.com slash people slash jpentelaresco for more details. How do you find the acoustics in so, so far it's alright. This is actually a little bit more... Um, I just turned this on by the way. <laughs> this is a li- I'm turning this one on too. See what happens now is you'll hear, see these red spots? That's See, that's where it's getting too loud. Yeah, that's when that's that's the background, right? But we're quiet. <laughs> see, <laughs> see? Mm, but uh, no, it, it, it's not too bad because it'll, it'll have its peaks and valleys, but it's quieter here than it would be anywhere else. So I guess yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I got kind of, kind of stolen off this. I didn't even mean to. It's kind of amazing how that works. So it's a busy con. Well, yeah, it's just it's just the way it goes. So. So how have you been enjoying it? Um, I was like exhausted going into it. Like I felt like I had already been to a con for the last week. So I get here and I'm like, 
I am so tired. I don't know but, how I'm gonna make it through the weekend. And, but, but when you're at a con, usually the energy. Oh yeah, yes, then the energy really popped up and, and I was that, like, there's so many people, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm dreading going to work on Monday because I'm mad and be like, I hate every single one of you. My energy's gone. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I dread that. But no, I always enjoy going to a kind of event. I'm actually like this year for me, it's it's more this and just actually being an attendee this year. I didn't, with everything that kind of happened the last couple months, no time to prep for anything else. It's just so no selling your own books here. Not well, no. I, I figured it out. Three books, I will do it. Like next year, I will sell my own books and I will, I will do it. But at two, it's close. I could break the. I could make the table. I know I could make the table, but it's one of those things where uh, I'm like, but but also Rand, Randy Randy was talking to me. He's like, Are you sure you want to table this year? <laughs> sure, you know. Yeah, he wasn't against giving it to me. It was just more along the lines of like, you know, the only problem being honest. The other thing too is. There's a lot happening here. Like I got to see Adam's Adam's little presentation. He's an amazing public speaker. Oh, he does great with his presentations. He he puts me to shame with his presentations. Oh yeah. Like I'm like I can't do what he does. I know why the schools go. Yes, please come back. Well, but no, but 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 you could. Um, differently. No, no, no. But yeah, you, you're your way. But you totally, you totally could. You, you definitely have the personality. You go out there. You you, 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 you pop. No, Adam. Adam knows how to. Like he, he's been coached. You can tell when you watch them. He's been coached very, very well. And I think the difference between him and me is he understands his way so far, and I'm just sort of starting to get there. What my way is. So like I'll have amazing uh, presentations or school readings or, or signings. Even I'll be like. I, yeah, I can do this. And then next week, next month, something will happen, and I'll be like, I thought I knew how to do this. And bleh. If, if, if you had time, honestly, I tell you to do a play. <laughs> no, I'm serious because think about think about every audience is different. Every every uh, every show is different, and every the people, the ambiance, the mood. You can't predict any of those things. You just know going in, this is the crowd. The, the real trick of whatever you're doing is reading the crowd and doing, like, okay, maybe this and this is not what they want to see from you today, but they might want to see that. Yeah. And that's, and that's, and the thing about doing a play, and the reason why I'm recommending a play is, um, you do that every night. You're doing a, a set, like, material, but you get to play with that material in a way, and if it doesn't work, well, it's okay. One night, that actress bombed, and it's like, that's the end, and then that's the end one night and then the next night you might find something that really works and you just kill it and that's and I that's, like um I like doing my readings. It's yeah. the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, and I and I know where to jump off in my reading and I know I, I know how to do my reading and then I like to interact because I, my audience is is like grade four to grade eight, right? Four, yeah. So the interaction is really important because if you if you're just reading or talking to them or that you're gonna lose that that the, energy goes right down well the energy goes out the window because they're not engaged at all no like, it's, it's somewhere in the basement they're sleeping <laughs> or they're out the window looking well, at the stars they're, they're like that. is it recess yet yeah yeah i actually they're missed. like can we do math <laughs> i was like is it recess yet but that's okay <laughs> i was like i was in school but yeah. that's me yeah that's um, what my kids used to always say what's your favorite subject lunch <laughs> like, what do you learn at lunch? No, don't talk. <laughs> That's playground stuff. You've been touring, huh? How's how's your tour? My tour, my my haphazard mistakenly tour. Haphazard mistakenly tour? Uh, you know what? That's what I'm calling it. Okay, so so so, so why why is it the haphazard mistakenly tour? Well, I had all sorts of stuff planned for WWC and all, right? Um, but. I had like this big chunk of time in the summer where the book wasn't quite out and I was, you know, um, not sure what I was going to do with my life. We have zero funds because we are living in the economic downturn and, and my husband has a job that got affected by this. And uh, I'm like, I have zero money and I have zero anything and I have zero book, new one, obviously. And I'm like, I just need to go see my family. That's, I mean, I just finally went. I need to go see my family. I'm in a bad place with stuff. That stays out, <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> but I'm like, sometimes family time's needed. 
So I called up my sister and said, what if I just drove out to you? And she says, sure. And so my oldest daughter has a car and we were able to like do it in her car for 310 bucks from here to Toronto. That includes food and gas. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not, it's not bad. Um, I've done that trip all over by a bus and I've done that for about 150. Yeah, the bus. Yeah, that, yeah. Okay. I don't have the gas thing to deal with, but yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. a... Yeah. No, it's, that, that's a cool So thing. that's that's what I planned is because I have yeah. all this time, no funds, all this other stuff and uh, it was going to, that's all it was going to be, it's just a re recharging kind of thing. <laughs> and then I told Brian, just so he'd know, oh, I'm going to be out of town for a couple of weeks and going to Toronto and he's like, well, while you're there, you should try to get some signings in. <laughs> and then it snowballed. <laughs> that's good though. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, I mean, you've been you've been working at this a long time, longer than even I have actually. Well, and this. that's why I wanted to go on this trip and be just family, just be selfish and sleep yeah. until noon and have someone else do the cooking and the cleaning because my sister was going to take care of me. It was going to be perfect. <laughs> didn't, didn't work out that way. No, and then I've got Mickey, my wonderful publicist. Yes. And so as soon as I told him, I'm like, yeah, it's a little short notice, but in two weeks I'm going to be in Toronto. What can you do with that? And he got me two signings, and while I was out there, he got me a presentation and a reading. Nice. And I was like, wow. And I'm just getting ready for my tour. I don't know what my dates are just yet. I just did the order for the books. I just did. So I don't know if it's enough, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out as we go. And um, I'm going to be, I know I'm going to be in Toronto, Windsor, London, Detroit, because that's where my family is. Yeah, um, I wanted to do that one there first. I have some really crazy ideas for next year, but we'll see how that works out. So, well, yeah, and I mean, yeah. Toronto reaped the hugest rewards I could have ever expected because my second signing, I'm at Bay and Bloor, their flagship department store, amazing. Mm -hmm. um, loving the fact of just being there, just loving it. And this guy walks in with a very large personality, and, uh, and I stopped and said, can I tell you about my books? And it turns out that he uh, he's a um, uh, radio host for Sirius Radio. Nice. Nice. So he does a show. And he's going to put you on the show? And he's going to put me on the show. We, awesome. haven't, we haven't recorded it yet. I was supposed to record it before I left Toronto, but some things came up for him. And he, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So no. we're going to do it over the phone, and, and I'm going to be on Sirius Radio sometime in the next couple of weeks. That's awesome. Which is perfect, because Quista is coming out. So. Well, well, no, it, it, it just seems like a nice, a nice magical thing, and yeah. I sincerely wish you nothing but good luck and success on that. Um, but, uh, no, it, it's... Uh, Little insider information, again, you don't have to put this in the article, please don't. I just know there's, there's no article, this is a podcast. Oh, then I'm not going to say anything. Na, 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 na. Na, na. No, you tell me when it was off the air, yeah. I, I, just, I was going to mention this the second time, you said, don't say anything. I said, wait, wait, we better, we, better, we better make this very clear. You're on my podcast. So this is an audio oh, show. I have a sub store, sorry. Oh, oh my gosh. You, you, can, you can if you want, it's all good. I just, as long as you're you, it's all I really care about. But, um... No, so if you want to tell me really wonderful, juicy things like Mike did with no, me, you can wait no, till no, I go no. off the air. No, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can wait till I go off the air. I have information you don't. Yes, folks, I do talk to my guests off the air. It's okay. You don't need to know. But, uh, <laughs> it's right. but Anyways, uh, yeah, so so that's uh, that was Toronto, and I had already, Mickey and I had sat down, my publicist had sat down, and I, I had pretty much mapped out every weekend from WWC on. So, of course, this Thursday I have my book launch. Uh, then I have a couple of regular signings because I always do my regular signings. Then I have Winnipeg because Mickey said, if you're going to do a tour in, in Canada, you need to do Winnipeg. And he's absolutely right. I'm yeah. going to tell you this, like this, I'll tell you this, C4, I killed it. Well, I, no, 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 no. And I already, I'm already booked for C4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But he's like, you should go to Winnipeg no, 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 and do no, some I mean, signings. This, this, let me finish. This is important. I had nothing, no table, no nothing. Like I was just, I just literally came by the seat of my pants. I cleared my table and then some. They are huge book readers out there, big time. And um, like I said, I, I slowly ingratiated myself some people from that community as well. Um, I haven't heard back, by the way. When I do, you, I will let you know. Um, but the thing of it is, um, 
it's a huge market there, and it's one of the biggest markets in Canada nobody's aware of. Okay, and, so. Yeah, anyways. I listen. When people talk, I listen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I say, okay. I will clear out a weekend of my signings, and I'll give it to you. And I, I gave him the 25th weekend of, of August. Um, so he books me into a couple of signings, and then he starts talking to McNally Robinson. Yes. <laughs> See, I'm like, McNally Robinson, whatever, okay, cool. And he's like, no, no, Aviva, you're not understanding. This is a big thing. You're going to McNally Robinson. So. It is the biggest independent bookstore in the country. Apparently. Yes. <laughs> They used to be here too, actually, once upon a well, time. Well, it's, it's in BC. I know they have stores in BC. Yeah, but they used, they used to be here. Uh, they were in Calgary, right downtown on Stephen Avenue. Uh, they, no, they got they got some pretty big names in here. I think I when I left Calgary the first time, when I came back, they were gone. A lot of bookstores, there used to be even more bookstores in Calgary, and they just all got, like, I, I guess when the property just kept going up, 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 it drove out some of, the, some of these businesses, unfortunately, because as much as I love fairs fair, I uh, would. I, I uh, would. Okay. Yeah, I'm just. As <laughs> I'm a, not I, sure I love them, but okay. Yeah, as, I, I, I'm being nice. So I'm, I'm being diplomatic. Yeah, you'd be diplomatic. Like, yeah, you'd be, <laughs> so I, know I, I know my books have ended up in there. <laughs> so have mine, actually. So, um, but um, it, it, it's kind. Of, I, I, see, that's truly. I feel that's when you make it as a writer is when your books are in the youth section. That's actually what I feel when you made it's like. Oh, oh then I'm done. Huh. Yeah. Yes, really. High five. We gotta do that. Right here. Yeah. That's right. High five. That's right. You heard high five. That's right. You made it. No, that's it. It's not that when people hate you. It's when you're actually just in the used book section on a regular basis, and that's when you're like, you know what? I'm part of the economy. <laughs> I have made it all the way down to used. Yes. <laughs> Second hand me. Yes, right, totally. But I mean, hey, I mean, you've been working at this. I met you at a writer's group a long, long time ago. Long, long time ago, way back in a different lifetime. Yes, very much so. And uh, I guess I, I, I'll, I'll be, I'll say something really nice. I mean, you helped me out too, and you didn't have to, so thank you very much. Aww. Yeah, see? <laughs> see? You're welcome, yeah. sir. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I try. So, um, I'm going to say this. It literally is the next book I'm reading after my current one. Excellent. It literally is. I have not read this one yet, but, um... Blood Matters. Yeah, it matters, yes. So, but, uh, I was going to say... So, let's, let's start there. So, you got... So, you started... Actually, we'll go... Before we go there, we'll start here. You started as an independent writer. Right? I did. You did. So... Did you have like the, did you envision this where you're at right now, or did you actually, or did you, or was your goals more modest? <laughs> yeah, so um, you and Modest don't work in the same thing. Yeah, but we really don't fit in the same room. No. <laughs> um, no, I was never going to be an author though. Like you know my story, I was never going to be an author. Um, I did like to tell myself stories in my head when I did dishes and back in the house, but I was very happy to be a housewife with four kids and a day home full of kids. That was where I was going to be, um, and then it was when my daughter was in junior high, and uh, she didn't want to be in junior high anymore, she didn't want to be in the world anymore, so um, I caught her before she could do anything permanent, and um, let's see, from there we got her some counseling and therapy because it was way beyond my capacity, and I told her the story that I used to tell myself when I was her age about this teenage girl that was not fitting in and the ghost that kind of came along and showed her how to be more popular. I guess that's how I explained it to her. Um, and so she said, can you write that book for me, Mom? Uh, <laughs> guess you're right now. Well, and see, I, I say this because it makes total sense. I, I Being an author, putting my my words to paper was one of my biggest fears in life. It was one of the things I never ever wanted to do ever, ever, because I am dyslexic and I look like a grade three-er when I write. And so it's embarrassing and, and it makes me feel like a failure. And so even with all those things, I had this little voice in my back of my head, my mommy voice, that basically said, here I am expecting her to face some of her biggest fears. She doesn't want to live anymore. Life is too, too tragic and horrible and everything. And I'm not trying to downplay it because teenagers feel that way. But I'm asking her to have faith and hang in there and face all of her fears. And yet she's like, write me a book, mummy. And I'm like, no, that's just too scary. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> that yeah, wasn't going to fly. <laughs> that, 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 that's one of the situations where the daughter is teaching the mommy some things about herself she didn't want to face. Well, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. So, so I took up the challenge and I wrote it, but it was only for her. Like, it was not, I didn't dream anything other than, here's your manuscript, sweetheart, which only took, like, two years to get into her hands. So she's, like, 17 now and over most of it and almost graduated high school. But she still read it and loved it. And she turned around and said, now you need to publish it because everybody needs to read it. And she's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're like, again, <laughs> one phobia, one fear at a time, right? Yeah. That's, that's, yep. that's the way it goes. So, yep. but, uh, so you did that. So that's when I started envisioning fame. Okay. <laughs> and I'll be honest. I was like, I'm going to get this published. I'm going to get it in bookstores. And I'm going to be like J.K. Rowling. <laughs> still might you never know <laughs> well just not that quickly <laughs> it wasn't quick for her either yeah, our, yeah. Our, our, actually uh, we'll, we'll, we'll dovetail really quick because this is a really funny like this is if you ever make a movie someday just to keep this in mind uh jk Rowling and the harry potter books were supposed to be one the first three were supposed to be one movie <laughs> uh, all right hollywood was again she was like a real writer at that point in time and, and hollywood was doing their what they do and then they got the numbers on book three. And the numbers went to number... She didn't explode at book one. She didn't explode oh, at book two. It was, it was book, book three. three that she blew up. And did she blow up? To such a degree that her agent gave Warner a number. It's a big number. <laughs> and Warner, the Warner first said, we've never bought a franchise work. No. They showed up. You're not buying it. This is your rights to film it. Because she had gotten so big that she didn't need anybody anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, all I'm going to say is it may not be Blood Matters, it may not be Kiss of Book 1, it may not be Book 2, but maybe one of these days, Book 3, you will be so big and famous that you will be calling your shot. Hey, you can dream. <laughs> all right. Well, I still like to dream, I, I'll tell you that. that but, but, yeah, Safe, Safe took a very different um, tact. I mean, it was it was... 2009 when it came out. I'm, I'm not doing math because that will make me look a little bit slow. Because <laughs> it'll take me like three minutes to figure out how many years ago that was. Anyways, <laughs> 2009 it came out. Um, I thought it was going to be huge and big and all I had to do was get into bookstores. I figured out very quickly you have to get into bookstores and then you have to make people buy it when it's in bookstores. <laughs> Uh, lesson learned. <laughs> well, I, 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 the heart, I, I learned that lesson myself. I published another book a long, long, long time ago. It was my first, it was an experiment. I didn't, I, there was no big goal. I just wanted to see what I could do. And I realized getting your book into chapters, getting your book into these places is actually the easy part. Yeah, the getting, your, getting your book written is the easy part. Yeah, <laughs> kind of is, yes. Yeah, it, it, it's everything else that goes with it that really makes or breaks breaks the uh, success or failure. It's what, especially nowadays. I mean, whether you're not, I mean, you got you have you have a publisher, a nice small publisher, not a, a big one, but not a small one either. Yeah. And you're still doing the majority of the marketing. You're still oh, yeah. doing the majority of that work now. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's that's the uh, yeah, that's the reality. That's the hard truth, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's a hard truth. But I didn't. I see. I didn't learn it on safe. I didn't learn it on my next book, which was stuck facing forwards, which I never published anything beyond online. I didn't learn it on chip, which I did a very very small print run of two hundred, which eventually got sold out. It took me a year to sell out two hundred, whereas safe sold out two hundred in three months. So it was a very different book, a very different market, and and. It had some problematic stuff because I was self-publishing now, so I was very little ignorant. <laughs> I'm like, editors don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I actually got a little pain right here now. It's like, yes. Have you felt that way? What? Have you felt that way a little bit? <laughs> well, no. It's just, it's just one of those things. It's just one of those things where um, I've been an editor. Yeah. And I've been, and, and and some of the things I've read as an editor make, I mean, no, no, when it's beautiful, editors love beautiful things. When they actually can look at it and they can't argue at all with it. It's like that is rare and beautiful and precious and, and you love that. But then there's the flip side where you see something, and by the way, dyslexia is not my concern. I really don't care if you can't spell. <laughs> that's, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's, not, that's not really, 
if I know you have dyslexia going in, I'm not, I'm not going to care. It's like, that is as an, easy, an editor. As an editor, I'm not, I'm not going to care. It's, it's an easy fix. As an editor, though, if I'm reading about chaos theory, about the butterfly as a form of, I don't know what that was, and I still, to this day, don't know what that was, I, 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 was, I, was, I was like, I had no idea that I have to read this. I had to try to fix it. And that's, <laughs> And that's that's when I was like, you know, Ella Beaumont has what is is got is, she's got the patience of an angel, and that's why I'm a writer and she's an editor. <laughs> well, see, I think um, the editor that I was using at the time, um, he wasn't speaking the language that I could hear. He was also very young, and I didn't know how new an editor he was. He had edited Safe, but. Safe as a drama, and, and it flowed as a drama. He edited Stuck Facing Forwards, and to be honest, other than being 190,000 words, for the most part, all but three chapters was needed. So, but then it came, along came Chip, and it's a sci-fi, and it, and it reads like a drama. <laughs> it happens. I now, mean. now I've, I've crossed genres. I have a lot of people that are terribly angry with me that I didn't reprint and keep going on Chip because they're like, we liked it. I think they're drama readers who like the sci-fi part that was put in. Well, Chip super is like your superhero thing, right? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, comic book, like comics by their rare nature are drama. They're monthly periodicals. It's drama. That's what it is, right? Yeah, but I read. But it reads like a like a teenage drama as yeah. opposed to a teenage sci-fi. Yeah. And and because of that, a lot of the drama people liked it, but a lot of the sci-fi people I was trying to sell it to were like, "This is not sci-fi." <laughs> and I learned that when I wrote Blood Matters. Yes. Because along came Ella, and uh, I really think that if you can cultivate or, or, or a, I really think that if you can find the right editor for you. That's the first step, and then B, if you can cultivate the relationship so that when you when they speak, you understand what they're saying. And I know it's hard in this industry to get a really good publish uh, editor. Excuse me, you usually have an editor that has no time because they're really good, <laughs> and they'll be like, so, they'll say something like, "You're showing, not telling," and if you don't understand what they mean there, it's it's. I mean, that's an interesting, easy concept, except for when you're a new writer and you're like, but. How is this showing, not telling? And then you start telling. Oh, sorry, you start showing everything. Or it's, it's telling, not showing. Yeah, yeah thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah, let yeah. kicked in there. No, it's okay. Anyways, it's then you start showing everything, and they're like, now you're showing, and you should really just be telling. Because there's times when you, you're not supposed to show what's going on. Like, no, no, no it, it, the balance is, like, this, this, when it comes to show and tell, and this is where, again, I'm nowhere near, like, prose is my next big challenge after the book three is handed in. That's the next thing I'm doing. I'm doing a unique little project for Virginia Stark. I'm doing something else. Yeah, me, yeah, Virginia is amazing. She talked like a robot for five minutes on the podcast coming up in a week. It's, it's, it's amazing. But um, but um, no, we, we, we're doing a project together because uh, she seems like fun and something, something I enjoy. I wish she was here because I would love to meet her in person. But um, prose, is, prose is my next challenge. I've done this, what I did here was really cool. And I really enjoyed it, and I've told my story, and it's great, and I'm happy with it. But I need to do something else, and I kind of so there's that, and there's something else I want to work on. And so when I look at when I get show and tell, when I hear, when I hear show and tell, like for me, that's something I'm working on. It, you gotta know what your story is ultimately all about. Like that's that, that's that's the important thing. Like what's your story? It's a really simple concept, right? But it's a really it's simplicity's hard, right? It, it really is. Like like the simplicity is one of the hardest things to grasp. Like, okay, so if your story is about this and this, right? Um, if, if your story is about this and this, then you should be focusing on and telling about this and this. Be clear here. This is where you show. Where you tell is, okay, if there's this little spot, like this little side thing that you need to throw in the story, but it's not really a big deal. That's when you tell and not show. And that's how. And that's that's how I. That's that's yeah. that's yeah. that's the difference, right? You show what matters. You tell what doesn't. Yeah, yeah, and I get that now, but at the time, yeah. you know, or he'd be like, he'd be like, there's too many words, cut them down, and I'd be like, but I don't understand. Clearly, something's wrong. Like he edited. He's the first one who edited um, my my editor who did Safe and. Blood Matter, uh, Safe and um, Chip. 
stuck facing forwards and chip, he also did Blood Matters. And he, and I mean, as an author, you'll get better and better and better the more you write, right? Absolutely. So he was, he was definitely very impressed with Blood Matters. But he, he said something along the lines of, uh, there's too many words in, in this little section from this page to this page. And I'm like, what do you mean too many words? Like, <laughs> whereas Ella was like, info dump, info dump, info dump. And I was like, oh, that I understand. Yes. <laughs> and no. then she was nice enough to me. I don't know if she's nice enough to other people because we have that cultivated relationship where she was able to help me to understand how I was messing up. Mm -hmm and catch myself so that now I catch myself as I'm writing already. But that's the best part of being a writer better. Like one of my weaknesses in my, is tenses. I, I, it's, a really, it's a really easy mistake to make to go from oh, yeah. one to the other to the other. I'm catching them more. I still miss them. But, yeah, but it's, yeah. one, it's one of those things where it's just like, it's a little thing you just realize it, it, it's like, how, I saw this description. It's like trying and not getting why it's bad, then consciously realizing why it's bad and consciously fixing it until you get to the point where you're unconsciously fixing your stuff. Yeah, and yeah. that's when you know you, you, you've improved, right? Yeah. And, and those, those, doesn't mean you still don't have weaknesses. Everybody has weaknesses. Every author has weaknesses. Yes, every, every <laughs> single one of them. Yeah. Um, do you have time to read at this point? I, I, or are you, are you still kind of like in the, uh, like more doing and not so much having time to sit back and reading other books anymore. Um, I do books on tape though. Yeah. Like, because reading for me has always been an issue anyway, so the whole dyslexia thing. So um, I find that, I mean, unless it's a book that really catches my fantasy, and some of the books that really catch my fantasy are really embarrassing to say out loud. But, uh. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> okay. Unless it's a book like that, um, then, um, then. I, it, it just doesn't catch me enough, and I don't find the time to struggle through reading the rest of it. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I do find that um, uh, books on tape are excellent. Yeah. So, um, trip out to Toronto. My my daughter made me listen to uh, Game of Thrones. Nice. <laughs> Mostly, except for when you're driving through the dark and you're listening to some of these scenes, and you're like, "This is really hard. I'm I'm sleep deprived already. I'm driving. My eyes are doing. You know that glossy thing that they do when you've been driving for too long, and you're now seeing like little white rabbits. That's what I call them when you at the corner of your eye you can yeah, see you things. Really dots, yeah, yeah. And you're listening to this wonderful spooky voice. I can't remember who reads it. And he's putting you to sleep. He's putting you to sleep. <laughs> no, he's not really putting me to sleep, but he's talking about you know the things at the corner of the you know and the and the the characters coming back. Re animating and all the other stuff that Jane or, or R. Martin does is like and you're like maybe I should pull over and sleep now yeah. <laughs> maybe this is just too much so yeah well let's see well you know some I might be I there's a chance I will have a car in October nice a chance I don't it might be it might be ne early next year but it's it's I like I said gone through some big changes the last little bit and uh, just been I've been purging my ex to extending with stuff and because uh, I want to be doing some, I'm going to be doing, like I said, I have some crazy ideas for next year. <laughs> and uh, Book tours apparently. That, yes, and a few other things, but that's okay. Oh, crazy. You don't get to know. <laughs> not, the, not, not in the air. <laughs> not in the air. Yeah, it's not in the air. No. Um, I, 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 have some ideas for, I have some ideas for next year and also it's just... Um, I'm getting a buddy at work to actually show me actually some they're driving some bus driving basics. I'm gonna go probably take a test. Probably I'm gonna go stateside to take the test so I can get a full license or immediately that way, and I can just like, skip a lot of the um, hassles. <laughs> this yes, this graduated um, this graduating license thing is really crazy. Like well, I don't not, even it, understand it. Well, anymore. no, it, it's a, it's a cash grab. That's what it is. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's it, the thing is you're driving, and the fact of the matter is. These cars almost drive themselves now. It's not like it's like I mean maybe maybe once upon a time when you had like stick shifts and you've got to go from first to fourth and fourth to first and manual park. You know what? You keep your hands on the wheels yeah. and yeah. you keep your car in the lines and yeah. you've got it. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much it. And, and when you turn, you signal and make sure. Or, oh, and, you signal! Ah, oh. uh, you know, <laughs> funny story. <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona. I'm walking down the I'm walking on the sidewalk, and and, and it's rare because I'm gonna walk out on the sunny side. I'm one of those guys. I see two cars. Neither of them signal. They both turn left right into each other. Wow. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. It literally happened in front of me. It was it was it was funny. Not a signal. Not a look. Um, not a look. 
Yeah, Phoenix, Arizona, nobody seems to look left. And I noticed that like, even walking across the street, no one was even just driving. Just, they looked one way, they wouldn't look the other. So wow. it's like, bam! It wasn't like a hard collision, it was just like they were turning left, but they turned left to each other. It was awesome. And it was just like, so that's why you signal, folks, because that way... But you also look. I yeah, mean, you, you know, know, I could signal till, till my, I'm blue in the face, and if someone's not looking, then... Yeah, I know, but neither of them look. So it's like, you gotta look, you gotta signal, and, and, and speed limits are a concept. But yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know, though. I, uh, driving through to, to Winnipeg, uh, past Winnipeg, to Ontario. Um, Nora? Who, yeah, well... Or Toronto. I meant to all the way to Toronto. Oh, just driving all the way through, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so you took Alberta seven to and Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan and so. Manitoba. You can go 100, sometimes 110. Then you hit Ontario and you can go 90. Yeah. And it and it was really sad because I know the car can handle more than 90. I know I can handle more than 90. And most people on the road around me are going 120. Yes. <laughs> no, it's, it's, you know, it's what? Speed limit is just a suggestion? Like Okay, there are places if you ever go stateside and the speed limit says one thing and everybody's driving faster, you're the one that gets the ticket. No, I know. And the reason the reason being is you're the danger. They're well, not. Because you're going slower, right? Yeah, well no no, it's not even because you're going slower. You're actually a danger on the road. Um if everybody's going, if, if, if there's a rule, there's a there's an unwritten rule. It's called the rule of the road. Is if you're on the road and and they're, everybody's going at 110, right? Just for argument's sake, or in the states, it's like 70, 75 miles an hour, right. right? And if you're going with that speed, you're fine. The cop will not stop you. But if you're if speed, that's, even the speed limit is 65 or 55 in the states, it doesn't matter. The point is, you're with traffic. You're not a danger. It's an unwritten rule. If you're going 55 and you're going in a lane where people are going faster, you're an impediment to everybody else's danger, they will give you the ticket. Because, okay. Yeah. But we live in Canada and that's not the case. It is in some places. <laughs> it is in some places. Toronto on the 401, absolutely it is. It happens there. Um, I've seen it there. I've seen it on, I've seen it uh, any of the major highways. The four, and down there like 401, 403, 402. Yeah, oh, you're down right. That happens there too. It's the same thing. It's an unwritten rule. It's universal, right? So it's it's. Um, well, it's also uncomfortable not to go with the speed limit. But there's also yeah. there's a certain degree over the speed limit that I also feel uncomfortable. No, no, with, so. abso no, 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 abs absolutely. And, I'll and, just say I didn't get any speed tickets. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll, say, we'll say you're good. No, I'm, just, I'm just throwing this at you. It's like that's 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 generally. No, but it just it, it felt so depressing to hit Ontario and yeah, then all yeah. of a sudden. Whoa. No, no, I know. And you're like, and I still have a day. To go, <laughs> yeah, about that. And it's like you, you, you go through the long forest there because I've done the, I've done that trip. Long forest, you get the Thunder Bay, it's get lively again, and then you go through more forest. Yeah, and then yeah. when you hit Sault Ste. Marie, it's when you start seeing things diversify again. Yeah. And then and you're still four hours out of Toronto uh, at this point, well, yeah, uh, about six, but yeah, <laughs> four, okay, yes, I mean, four hours. What was I thinking? <laughs> I mean. I'm actually kind of sad. I one of the times I went off to Ontario, I got to see a moose. Nice. Yeah, yeah, nice. it was awesome. Yeah. Now, the first time I went, I was told about these these road impediments. My friend had gone a month before me, and she'd driven out with her family. And uh, she says she starts seeing these signs at the sort of the road, but they're, they're they're kind of these lumps that 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 look weirdish, but you can't. She's like she's seeing these signs for this animal, but she's never seen this animal in real life because they don't have the moose standing up. They have the moose lunging. <laughs> that does happen too, depending on where you are. Exactly. Yeah. So she starts. She asks someone as she's stopping at one of the stops because they they actually sell them as as little novelty things, right? These these road signs, and uh, the guy says, "Oh, that's the moose." <laughs> and she's like, "Oh, okay, are moose a problem?" And, and he's like, "Yes." And if you're going to be driving through the night, don't like go fast. Like go slow and watch for the shadows, because the moose will come and sit on, like stand on the road, and own it. And and he says, in fact, drive behind a trucker. Yes, actually, I, that's actually <laughs> good advice. Safest way to drive. <laughs> it did. Actually, pretty much anywhere. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so I went the next like the next month, and uh, I see these signs immediately, know what they are, and go, yeah, that certainly doesn't look like a moose at all. <laughs> and I drove behind the truckers, and everything was fine. The second year I went. We stopped at the campsite one night. Everyone went to sleep in the van. Um, got up at four in the morning because I was awake and the sun was coming up. We had been six in the morning. Buckle all my kids in because got to be buckled. Start off. I 
I've got this beautiful Hutterite 15 seater van. And I'm, and I'm driving along the highway because it suns up. I don't have to worry about impalements and stuff. And I come around a corner and <laughs> there's a moose. Now I'm not going fast. No. Um, I go around the corner, there's a moose in the other lane. So as I'm coming up to him, I'm like, I can just pass him, right? Like he's in the other lane. You can pass things when they're in the other lane. <laughs> and that sort of logic kind of came into my head and I'm like, what happens if he gets like really pissed off if I'm passing him? And he does what those signs show that they do. Yeah. <laughs> but at this point I'm sort of almost parallel with him. Yes. So I, I've got it slowing down to like a crawl. And me and the moose are like eye level as I'm passing him. And he's eye level out my window and I'm like, wow, I'm eye level with the moose because I've got this huge beautiful van. <laughs> I get around the corner and I'm like, Wow, that just happened, and I turn around, and all my kids are still sleeping. <laughs> and uh, and I just sort of passed him, and he kind of goes and walks off the road. <laughs> so it was kind of neat. I get around the corner, I start going down the hill, and there's this little red La car, booning it out there. And I look over at him, and I went, "Saved your life," because I know I had seen that the moose had left the road by the time I left. Uh, so I was kind of disappointed because I was really hoping it's been almost 10 years since I did that. It'd be nice to see another moose. And you might, depending on where you go. <laughs> I, you, you, you going back to Ontario anytime soon? I might go next year. Yeah. My family's out there, so yeah, well, yeah. and it's a cool drive. Like, oh no, absolutely, it's one of the best drives. It's one of the best drives. The only one left that I have not seen is Newfoundland, Quebec. It's yeah. the only one I haven't done yet, um, and I would like to do that. It's one. Of, maybe we'll, we'll just say it's one of my crazy things for next year. I like to do, <laughs> right? And um, but but it's yeah, just uh, it's on my bucket list of well, bucket list smaller. It's on my list of things to do. So, yeah, yeah. So, but beyond all that, so we got to, we got we got to talk pizza before we call this a conversation. I'll go <laughs> here. We, but very cool interview, I think, so far. Um, so t so you you. You got an edge, which yeah. by the way, you, yeah. congratulations. Thank you. And you, uh, they got I, I wooed him. Yes. I, I wooed him. I, I met him with Chip, yeah. and I said, one day you're going to publish me. And he said, um, okay, what do you write? And I said, YA. And he says, honey, we don't publish YA. And I went, that's okay, one day you're going to publish me. And it took him five years, and he came back to me and said, so guess what, Aviva? And I'm like, what? And he's like, we want to get into YA. And I'm like, oh. So you want something? And he's like, yeah, I want Chip. And I'm like, yeah, you can't have Chip because it needs to be re retooled. And he's like, never retool. Never go backwards. Just move forward. So he says, what do you got? And I'm like, Blood Matter was, was out. And he's like, okay, I'll take that. I do vampires. I do science fiction. It's funny because I, I, I think I, he, like, again, same thing. He, he likes me and he's frightened by me at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, right? he, likes, he likes my gumption in my drive, but he also knows I'm, I, I, I'll go... Yeah, you'll get there. Oh, okay. oh, oh, I'm, I'm not worried about it. It'll come when it comes. I, 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 I've done. I've carved this, whatever this is. I've carved for myself, and it, it, it things will come. They, they, they will in the right time. But so, Quista. Quista. So we get a Quista. <laughs> Quista. Um, I actually started telling Brian about it before he'd even picked me up. Uh, Quista is a story I told myself when I was twelve. Okay. I used to walk myself to school. It was my first story where um, it wasn't a princess locked in a castle being saved by a prince. Because <laughs> I used to fantasize about those all the time because, you know. Whatever. Yeah, I was 12. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's all good. So, Quista is amazing because it's this water world and uh, as I was growing up I had this idea of, of uh, when, I was, when I was 12, it was a water world, there was other worlds in the world, and there was a ton of water creatures. That's the concept that, that I had at 12. Um, when I was 20, 30, I, I remembered all the worlds, and I started looking at how they, they, they moved around the sun, which eventually became three suns. Um, and I went, that's totally impossible. But the magic entered in at that point. And so it's, it's the royals of the, of the dynasty of the world that keep the planets in their rotational cycle so that all the all the planets get enough um, energy from the suns and uh, and don't die but they also don't when they pass close together they don't like collide so yeah magic trumps all <laughs> and then I wanted to make Danae an outcast um, because I definitely have the theme of outcasts in my in a lot of my stories but I wanted to make her an outcast for 
counterintuitive reasons. So I made her too tall and too thin and too blonde on a world where beauty is measured by the size of your wet skin. Nice. So basically challenging yourself a little bit in terms of and you know, it's going to get out of your comfort zone. How many do you have a, a book, a number of books projected here for this? Yeah, three books. Um, okay. That's part of that is it, there's, there's a there's a number thing that goes with this. <laughs> there's a reason there's now three sons, but yeah, uh, uh, we'll, 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 leave, we'll leave that for we'll a future. We'll go into that into a future, definitely. But yeah, so three three books because um, the story presented itself in uh, three complete chunks. And, uh, and I have most of the story already plotted out. It's just sitting down and writing it out. Fair enough. We got a pretty good interview here. So well, I won't, why don't we wrap this up this way. If people want to hunt you down and find you on the, on the interwebs, where will they find you? Uh, easiest way is www.avivabellherald.ca. Don't go to .com because that, that site was pirated and some um, Asian chick runs it now. <laughs> and if you Google it, I am not Asian. <laughs> just so, just so you know. So, um, the other way is I'm on Facebook, um, I'm on Twitter, and I'm on Instagram because that's where everything is happening and hot. All right. Uh, well, how would they find you on Instagram? Like, what is there? Is there uh, um, Aviva the author Aviva? or Aviva Bell Herald? All right. Not on that note. And that is that for this episode. Check out. Check out Aviva's books, Kista. Also, Blood Matters. Blood Matters, I'm reading right now, actually. Enjoying it very, very much. Um, like I said, she probably hate me to say this, but yeah, it kind of reminds me a little bit of The Host by Stephanie Meyer. So sorry, Aviva. But if I say that and, and, and you think I'm terrible, let me know. I'm just don't, don't be me too hard, okay? Um, to the rest of you, um, this is it for this episode. A little different than normal, no theme music, no, no, um, no, uh, promotions beyond Aviva. Um, more than anything else, like I said at the beginning, be kind to each other. Um, we need that more, quite a bit in the remaining few days. Next one will be a lot more happy and much more upbeat because tomorrow, because you know what, there is always another day. Um, but right now, um, stay inspired and, uh, stay bold. All right, have a good one. Josh. Josh.